When I first met Gary in 2004, I was the chair of the search committee that was looking for a dynamic minister to take St. Andrew's Wesley into being truly a light in the heart of the city. Gary was such a special person. He was so creative, willing, caring, and just so willing to address new issues. As church treasurer, we worked many times together on trying to find money in order to allow the church to grow. I always knew Gary was in the church office because uh, when he would first arrive, his happy whistle would precede his entry into the church. Thanks, Gary, for all that you have done for St. Andrews Wesley and especially for caring for me over these 17 years. The first thing that I remember is when Gary came to a coffee hour before he actually started at St. Andrews Wesley. The congregation was so excited. We were so ready for a change. Some of the other memories are his interaction with children and how he told them that God loves them. Working with the congregation to become more inclusive to, of all. Great sermons. A growing congregation with a real children's program. And great educational sessions. As you retire, Gary, and move into this new phase of life, I rejoice for you. May you and Tim have great travel adventures good health and happiness. And I found out that the following Sunday would be his first service here. And I thought, okay, let's check it out. I mean, I hadn't been to church. I hadn't been a churchy person in about 30 years. It just didn't flow. I went when I went to see my mother, but that was about it. So we came to that Sunday service and it was amazing. I was, I was welcomed back into the church and back into a church family. And Gary's presence was, was almost mesmerizing. His, his ability to speak directly to you, even though you were part of a congregation, just made you feel so good. He started up at the top of the chancel steps and, and he preached there for maybe five minutes. And then he came down a few steps and then he looked over to one side a little bit and he said, now hold it right there. And then he came down a few more steps and looked over the other way. And he started a new sermon and, and started uh, preaching for another five minutes or so. And then he said, now hold it right there. Then he walked down a few more steps to the bottom and he was in the center aisle, just about at the front pew. And he was, and he started to, to preach again. And I was thinking, this reminds me of the, the plate spinner on the Ed Sullivan show. You know, the guy that has a, a pole and he puts a plate up on the top and he starts to spin it. And then he goes on to another plate and he puts it on the pole and he starts to spin it. And then there's a, uh, Gary's down at the, at the front row and he puts another plate up and starts to spin it. Well, this went on, uh, he got to the bottom and uh, uh, he delivered a Bible verse and then a poem, and then he started pulling all of these pieces together, and he tied it all up with a bow, and it was the most amazing sermon. Uh, and I knew we'd come to the right place. Whenever Gary like preaches, he's always like not boring. Because usually, when I think of like. Catholic Church because my mom goes to Catholic Church or she used to it would be like super boring and I was younger So I couldn't get through it But Gary would make it interesting and funny and he would always make jokes Many of the services that I spent at St. Andrews Wesley I was with the little ones which was such a joy But on the few occasions that I was able to actually hear Gary's sermons I absolutely loved the poetry that he would include often reciting a full poem at the end and as a English lit student in the making and then a new English lit student as I entered university this always stood out to me and I, 
I loved hearing his poetry. Um, and the inclusion of these words and texts that aren't from our scriptures in the Bible taught me that faith goes far beyond just what we are able to do together on these Sundays. And also poetry I have always loved because it is an acknowledgement and an honoring of beauty and of life in all of their messiness and complications. And hearing Gary include these poems in his sermons taught me that that is also what faith is. One of my fondest memories of you is whenever a baby gets baptized, you always include everyone, all the children. You'd go around with the bowl of water and sprinkle the water on all the kids. And it was just super fun to be included that way. Many years before Dad started uh, working at St. Andrews Wesley, we came uh, one summer to worship here, and it was an unfamiliar experience for me. I hadn't been to many churches that weren't my home church, and uh, I was feeling quite nervous, and all the children were going up for children's time, and I didn't feel ready to go up and join a group of unfamiliar uh, faces and Gary saw Catherine and I in the congregation and said, Colleen, Catherine, great to see you. Come on up, come join us. Um, and that's a memory that I carry with me, that gesture of inclusion and uh, recognition um, is emblematic of, uh, for me of Gary's leadership and um, his dedication to including and making sure people feel seen and known um, and welcome wherever they are. For 17 years, we had this exciting and wonderful journey with him. And he took everything to the highest level and expected us to be up at that level too. And we tried our best to be that way. One of the main things that I've uh, taken away and kind of learned from this church is kind of the sense of community and openness that we have here. And Gary's been at the center of that from day one, no matter who it is walking through the doors on a Sunday morning, Gary's always there with opening, loving, and welcoming arms, and that's really something that I will like remember forever and that I really liked about Gary. The philosopher William James once said, the great use of a life is to spend it on something that will outlast it. You are doing this, Gary, by being a Christ-like model for us and by inspiring us to be the very best people we can be. When I think about all my memories of your time with us, I come up with things like your red socks on Pentecost, the kids climbing in your lap during children's hour, you popping down after the sermon or before the sermon to join the gospel choir to sing and clap. I remember the end homelessness now debate, how you somehow masterfully and calmly settled that crowd. Um, and your amazing sermons, thought-provoking sermons that stay with us for weeks after we've heard them. As I have gotten to know you and under your leadership in the church, all the component parts of my life that may seem like random bits and difficult bits somehow come together and help, you have helped me try to make something beautiful and meaningful out of my life. Over the years, we have had many conversations, sometimes me in my doubting of theology role, Gary always providing me with sage advice and ending with his favorite phrase, it's a mystery. I consider Gary a friend. He is a man of goodness, warmth, and integrity. Honora surrounds him that encourages people to draw near into his welcoming circle. Gary's always been um, such an inspiration. Um, he's able to ground me as a person and um, every service that, um, that, 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 that I've seen him that he does, um, you always leave inspired and want to be a better person, to do good. Um, he walks the walk, he talks the talk, he practices what he preaches, and um, he, uh, he's just, just an amazing, amazing person. One experience that happened in 2011 really, to me, speaks to who Gary is. 
we at the church, and I was working as a volunteer, were hosting a mayoral debate about homelessness and affordable housing. And a group of protesters and activists came up to the church from the art gallery and were very upset and wanted their say. And Gary handled it superbly. It was a very tense situation. He met with them in the narthex and asked them to be respectful and stay calm. But when there was heckling and interrupting, he went to the individual and talked to them quietly. And to me, this was the essence of Gary, that everybody deserves to be respected, to be listened to, because we are all God's children. I just want to say thank you. Um, you've been a role model, and all the thousand little things you've done have been really impactful, particularly um, your when you were a guest speaker at Confirmation. It was really helpful for me um, with spiritual journey and also just like really appreciating what you do and what you've gone through. So just thank you and congratulations. This has been a great time to be a member of St. Andrew's Wesley Church. Gary has led us from being a tired and discouraged congregation to what I feel is a great example of Christian life. Thank you, Gary.